Alrighty, so today I wanted to talk about stuff that's been going on with my uh, hormones. So I got some blood work done not too long ago, and my estrogen levels are a little lower than they needed to be, right? So I've got an endocrinologist appointment on Friday, which which is great. And I'm going to see if I can maybe get on estrogen patches or something, see what I need to do to get my estrogen levels up where they should be, because they shouldn't be that low considering that I'm post-op. And my testosterone levels are fine. They're, you know, within the they're in the low end of the normal female range. So um, I was taking uh, taking six milligrams of estrogen a day. I shouldn't have to take that much to get my estrogen where it needs to be. So I don't know what's going on. Hopefully the endocrinologist can help me figure all that out. Now... Here's the big problem right now. The big problem right now is that I'm running out of estrogen. Um, my, I thought maybe I had another bottle floating around somewhere, but I don't, apparently. So what I ended up having to do is I've cut back my estrogen dosage by a third. So one pill instead of three. I did that just so I would have something I could take every day until my appointment. So, for the past, um, like, three days, I have been on a third of my usual estrogen dosage. And I've got, like, I've got, like, right now, I've literally got, like, two pills left. So I've got a pill to take today... And then a pill to take on Thursday. And then hopefully the um, endocrinologist will hook me up because otherwise I'm fucked. And thanks to these um, low estrogen levels, well, I've got some, uh, I've had some hot flashes. Those are fun. But worse than that, is the dysphoria has come back. And that is definitely not fun at all. Like, I, you know, my dysphoria has been doing so well that I, like, I forgot just how bad it actually was. Like, having the dysphoria come back, it's just like, yeah, no, it sucks. Like, just a little while ago, like I was, I was looking at my hands and I actually said to myself, these aren't mine. So I'm already starting to feel like my body isn't mine again. That's not good. I've also started engaging in self-interest behavior. Like I, I was engaging in some scratching on my arm. So I do have uh, a couple of little... I have a couple of marks on my arm from where I was scratching, you know, and that's that's not good. So, yeah, I'm really, really glad I have my endocrinologist appointment on Friday because dysphoria sucks big time. And having all of this happen has gotten me thinking about some stuff related to stuff on Twitter. Like, there's this person on Twitter named uh, Angus. And and this is somebody who, they had transitioned, they'd gotten an orchiectomy, they'd been like on hormones for 13 years or something. And then they stopped taking estrogen for concerns about heart disease or whatever and then a week after they stopped taking it they had this realization like oh i'm i'm really a dude and that is something that i just don't understand because when my estrogen levels get too low my dysphoria comes back so i i so based on that alone like 
you know, I'm pretty confident that what I'm doing transition wise is what I need to be doing. That's, I guess, the only good, good side to um, this whole situation I'm in because it's like go off the, you know, my estrogen gets too low, my dysphoria comes back, then it's like, yup, I need the estrogen. And so, yeah, it's abundantly clear that what I'm doing is the right thing to do. So I'm not I'm not worried at all that some point in the future I'm going to be like, well, that was dumb. I shouldn't have transitioned. Oh, hell no. I mean, the way I feel right now, it's like, that is not going to happen. I mean, I'm starting to feel out of place in my body again. And no, fuck this. I, I need my estrogen back and I need it yesterday, last week, you know? Ah. Uh. The other thing that I was thinking about is getting into this whole argument over like, you know, what qualifies as trans, you know, and I'm of the opinion that if you're like some fucking bearded dude, uh, you don't get to qualify as trans. Thank you very much. If you're born male and you have no desire to get rid of your beard or otherwise medically transition, you're not trans. You're not a trans woman. No, you're not. Because if you really were trans, then you would have a desire to get rid of male features. I can understand... A person not getting sex reassignment surgery, and I can understand this to an extent because, because hormones, at least in my experience, play a huge role in alleviating dysphoria. I mean, considering that, again, my estrogen levels are low and my dysphoria is coming right back. So the fact that I got a, the, the fact that I got a pussy, like, okay, yeah, that, it, that's helping, helping it not get, like, overly bad, but I still got to has my estrogen. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, so I can see somebody who maybe they, they can learn to deal with having a penis. And also, like, your genitals are something that you don't show people. You can hide, you know, they're hidden away under clothing. A beard, on the other hand, like, I honestly, there's just no way. I cannot imagine a trans woman going out in public with such a very visibly male feature and not having just crazy bad dysphoria. Like, you know, there is... Now, something that I, I kind of understand, but also kind of don't, there's a trans woman I chat with on um, Discord... Currently, her transition is on hold. You know, she had kind of, she had been on hormones and all of that, but then I don't know why, but she stopped. And, you know, I don't fault her for that because I did that too. I was off of hormones for far too many years. And so she kind of basically reverted. And I guess I think she's got a beard at the moment, but she's working on getting back on all of that. But, so, I, I still find it a little weird that she wouldn't be, like, shaving at all during this time. But here's the thing, though. She's, she's in the, like, but the thing is, she's not, like, going around presenting herself as a woman and being, like, and acting like she's a woman despite having a beard. You know? So, I just, I just can't understand, like, the folks who are, like, all who like have a beard and they like having a beard and they're like, I'm a woman. And then you got the people who defend that. I mean, if somebody wants to have a beard and they want to wear a dress and makeup and whatever, great. That's fine. I, I don't have a problem with that. The problem I have is when a person like that calls themselves a woman and calls themselves trans because, no, you're not a woman. And then, 
you get the defenders who come along, but there are women, cis women with beards. It's like, but yeah, that's the thing though. It's different for trans women because if you really truly and true, if you really and truly are neurologically female, as that's kind of the basic idea behind transsexuality, if if somewhere in your brain, your brain is saying woman, then logically you would want to get rid of those male features because that's the whole deal with dysphoria. Your The male features of your body clash with what your brain is saying and that causes the dysphoria. So... I, I just, I can't understand somebody wanting to keep their beard. It makes no fucking sense to me. No fucking sense whatsoever. And you're not, I don't think, you're not going to be able to convince me that a bearded dude is trans or a woman or any of that. And I really wish these people would fucking knock it off. Like, if you want to wear a dress and have a beard, knock yourself out, but stop calling yourself a woman. I mean, I mean, God, given, given how I feel with my dysphoria right now, I'm sorry, but... If you don't experience dysphoria, you are not trans. If you've never had dysphoria, you are not trans, period. Okay, and it's not to say that you have to have dysphoria to engage in medical transition to an, to some extent or another. I mean, there are people who do it, you know, but I definitely think it's a bad idea, but people do do it. Like there's this this uh, there's this online cross-dresser shop that says that they're like the largest cross-dresser shop in the world or some such, right? And the owner of this shop ended up getting breast implants. Now, of course, it's their life, their body, whatever. But this person, like they're not a trans woman, they're a cross-dresser. Um, and I guess they maybe just decided they didn't want to wear fake titties anymore, so they got the real deal, as it were. But, you know, as long as this person doesn't call themselves a woman and doesn't call themselves trans, I'm okay with that. If they're just like, yep, I'm a cross-dresser, then that's fine. The point here is that there are people who are not trans who engage in some of the same medical procedures that trans folks engage in. Okay? And, so yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, back to the, uh, back to the dysphoria. Yeah, it sucks. Like, I mean, it is no fun. And honestly, if you do not have dysphoria and you decide to medically transition, you're going to get dysphoria. So, yeah, medical transition is not something you do for shits and giggles. It is something you do because you need to. It is a treatment for dysphoria. If you do not have dysphoria, then don't fucking do it. I mean, if you don't feel out of place in your own goddamn body, then don't fucking do it. And I, I say this as somebody who is a fan of body mods. I have multiple piercings and stretched out earlobes, and I'm planning on getting tattoos. You know, body mods are great. But fucking hormones and sex reassignment surgery and all that, that is heavy-duty shit that you should not be fucking with. Unless you have sufficiently bad dysphoria that you need this, okay? This is not something you do because of a lifestyle choice. This is something you do to treat a medical condition, okay? 
Hormones put you at risk for things like heart disease and blood clots and all of that. And potential risk, I think, for cancer as well. So yeah, no, this is not shit you want to fuck with unless you actually need it. And the uh, sex reassignment surgery, well, any surgery carries risks. And with SRS, you do run the risk of never being able to have an orgasm again, and you need to be prepared for that. Now, my orgasms are great, thankfully, but if I could never orgasm again, I would. I still wouldn't regret the surgery because I really needed that surgery. And if you decide in the future, gee, I wish I hadn't done that, too bad. The surgery is pretty much irreversible. Um, and in fact, I don't even know like what they can actually do. I mean, they might be able to do some kind of a prosthesis, maybe, maybe something along the lines of phalloplasty, but you're not getting back what you had. That I can tell you. So yeah, this is something you do not want to fuck with unless you absolutely need it. And this is why, like, I am really, really big on gatekeeping. Like, if you think you're trans, like, go see a goddamn therapist to make absolutely certain that transition is what you need. And, yeah, I I don't like the idea of informed consent for procedures and hormones. I mean, you know... This stuff just shouldn't be handed out to anyone who wants it. And of course, one of the arguments that comes up is, well, you know, some people can't afford to go see the therapist, blah, blah, blah. It's like, okay, the solution there is better insurance coverage for this stuff so people can afford to go see the therapist. The solution isn't just to make it a free-for-all. And the argument that, well, people, people, they, they know what's what's what um no the thing is people don't necessarily know what's what i mean people when it comes to medicine no people don't necessarily know what's what i mean People can say, hey, I I feel X, and then they might think, oh, I feel X, therefore I have Y, therefore I need Z. Well, no, maybe that's not the case. You know? Yes, they can they can they they, they can feel what they feel, but maybe they have something else going on. And maybe hormones are not what they need. And this is why therapy is so important because you do not want to go down the path of fucking medical transition only to later on find out that, oh, wait a minute, that wasn't my issue and I wasted all this time. Wasting all that time, going through all the hassle, and especially if you've had surgeries, you're fucked. At least with hormones in the case of uh, male to female the effects are are reversible except for the breast growth yeah so my videos are starting to get a little long but as tends to happen i'm i'm really good at rambling so yeah so there's just kind of a little bit about what's going on with me hooray for dysphoria and so yeah, I'll keep I'll keep y'all updated and I'll I'll definitely post try to post something on Friday after my endocrinologist appointment so I can kind of share what's going on with that and also I have been working on on stuff for my SRS video. And so that's going to be like a nice, you know, I'm going to do I'm going to do like a slideshow and I've also got some some video clips that I shot in the hospital that I'll be including and so hopefully that'll that'll get all set up and that'll get done soon 
Um, I don't know if I'll be able to get that done anytime like within the next few days because I think right now with my dysphoria, I'm just going to spend like the next couple of days like maybe just trying to distract myself, watching YouTube videos, playing video games, doing doing something because something to keep me from, you know, going excessively crazy and engaging in self-injurious behavior. So I'm just not sure if I'm going to be in a position to be productive at all. So, but we'll see. But yeah, I'm just hoping that the endocrinologist will be able to hook me up with estrogen immediately because I fucking need it because I can't be without it. It is driving me crazy. And like, it's making me, I mean, it's driving me crazy. It's making me feel shitty. It's bringing me to tears. Like, I I don't like this. This is bad. (laughs) And I mean, God, I mean, I'm looking at these, like I'm looking at my my pill bottle here where where I've got the two estrogen pills and I just want to take both of them right now. And I don't know if that's a good idea. Or if I should just take them take, um, like I've been doing, I really don't know. But yeah, my video's gone on long enough, so I will, yep, I will go ahead and I will see y'all later. And all my social media bullshit is in the video description and my Patreon is there. And if you can support me on Patreon, that would be awesome. And yeah, I will I will see you later.